My name is Jefferson Fraser. I am the director of Edge Compute and Delivery with Shutterstock. My team is a platform services team. We help enable our developers to bring their code and their content closer to the edge using modernless serverless technologies and topologies. Today I'm going to be talking about Amazon S3 intelligent tiering and some of the fantastic cost savings that we've realized at scale. We're going to start with our early architecture where we were in 2015 and how we migrated to AWS going to move into Amazon S3's evolution and how our access patterns have changed over the previous years. We're going to deep dive into our cost savings with Amazon S3 intelligent tiering and see how we saved more than 53% on our total S3 spend. And then I'm going to leave you with our ongoing development and our future state. I've got a few tips for you to leverage if you want to take S3 intelligent tiering to your accounts and to your companies and help leverage this powerful feature for yourselves. So if you're not familiar with Shutterstock, well, who are we? Shutterstock is a leading global creative platform for transformative brands and media companies. We specialize in high quality content and stock delivery across a very wide range of content types. We're mostly known for our photo offerings. We have more than 420 million images, and we grow at a very steady clip. We ingest more than 200,000 images per day. If images aren't your thing, we have a wide product offering. We also have a wide range of videos, MP3s, sound effects, 3D renderings, illustrations, vectors, the list goes on and on. If you're looking for a specific type of stock content for your media, Shutterstock is your one-stop shop for that. Outside of our customer-facing content, we also have a very large multi-petabyte data lake. We have a large data and analytics team using AI and ML to help leverage information about our applications and our deployment patterns to drive the highest possible value for our customers when they're trying to select their content at scale. So where were we in 2015? We were founded in 2002, and we developed a core set of services over this time. As we continued to grow, one of these core services was Shutterstock Storage Proxy. This started as an easy way for us to manage multiple object store backers inside of our lake. Over the years, we accumulated several open source and several proprietary S3 compatible object stores. But in 2015, we were looking down the barrel of a large hardware refresh. We knew that in the coming years, we would have to more than double our storage capacity while maintaining our high standards for content delivery and low latency. We had around four petabytes of images in 2015, and we knew that we were going to have to double this. With 5,000 physical drives spread across four data centers, this was going to be an insurmountable challenge. We knew that we had runaway upkeep costs, because the cost factor here wasn't just from storing the data. It's not just the hardware that you're managing. It's the internet service providers. It's the redundant electricity hookups. It's making sure that your HVAC is configured right, that you have diagrams so that you can find the correct rack, the correct blade that you need to replace. And we had a large on-premise team that would go and specialize in maintaining this hardware set for us. We knew that this wasn't going to be achievable if we wanted to double in size year over year in the coming years. As we selected Amazon for our cloud partner, S3 was the obvious choice for us to leverage for Object Store. Over the next five years, we didn't double in size. We grew by 4x. We grew from four petabytes of customer content to more than 16. Our data lake swelled from a few, few hundred terabytes to more than 40 petabytes distributed across our S3 footprint. During this time, we also scaled from a single account to a micro-account topology and having hundreds of buckets distributed across our platform. As we started to leverage S3, these same engineers who had previously been maintaining our hardware life cycles were now freed up. 20 to 50% of their working time was recovered from maintenance activities, and they were able to focus on our core business aspects and our core business challenges. These same engineers who had been managing hardware, replacing hard drives, running data lines, were now writing Amazon CloudFront. They were writing Lambda at Edge so that we could offload more than a billion customer-facing requests per day to our Edge, maintaining the highest standards for latency, availability, and content delivery across our fleet. We started to destructure and disassemble this proxy. We had built the proxy in what's called a strangler fig pattern. And the Strangler Fig application 
you start with your original host, and you build features to branch around the host. And over time, these features hide the original host from view. This was coined by Martin Fowler in 2004 as an easy way to manage high complexity migrations for your large monolithic systems. So we started to break down the Strangler fig once we had moved into S3 and Amazon. What was a traditional proxy running on-prem inside of a virtual machine has become a plethora of Amazon services. We can now run the same code distributed between S3 Lambda object access points, Amazon CloudFront, our traditional EC2 proxies, or EKS, or normal Lambda, really allowing our teams to directly interact with our content without having to go through our proxy layers. But we still had a challenge. We have thousands of buckets distributed, and each one of them required an engineer to be familiar with their use case and their contents in order to write applicable, tightly scoped lifecycle policies to transition our objects between storage classes. This was a very labor-intensive practice still, until enter Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering. Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering has a minimum object size of 128 kilobytes, which fits our access patterns perfectly. Our average object size across our fleet is somewhere around 2 megabytes. Once we started adopting Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering, we very quickly moved it into scale across all of our buckets in our fleet. To date, we've moved more than 40 petabytes of data into S3 Intelligent Tiering, and this has really become our easy button for storage optimization and cost management at scale. Instead of having to worry about specific bucket use cases, we can now say for certain that buckets are protected, they're using the correct tiering for their access patterns, and this is not going to impact customer-facing latency. Service control policies allow us to prevent engineers from mistake removing things or changing these lifecycle policies, so we know going forward we're going to maintain a high level of cost savings. So just how much money did we save? We realized a 53% reduction in cost across our S3 platform between March and July of 2022. Most importantly, this was realized with zero impact to customer latency, and these discounts were sustained through five months of content ingestion and growth. As you may remember, we ingest a lot of content every day. Our global contributors are contributing 200,000 images, so we're talking hundreds of terabytes of data per month. So these cost savings are achieved as we're continuing to grow and we're continuing to scale. We also had several what we call large data waking events. Our data teams frequently train AI and ML models against our entire storage set. Over these five months, we, all, we had two total inventory runs where we touched every object that we own across our fleet. So it was even more powerful that we maintained these cost savings throughout high velocity usage and many transitions between S3 intelligent tiering classes. We estimate that if we had not done these large data waking events and ingestion was not taken into account, we would have saved more than 60% on our total S3 storage cost just by implementing Amazon S3 intelligent tiering. So what is next for us, 2022 and beyond? As we continue to disassemble our original proxies and our original strangler fig pattern, we're moving our applications closer to our S3 access points, and we're moving our S3 objects closer to our customers. These Strangler Fig abstractions are now becoming software libraries, or CDK Layer 3 constructs, so we can provide standardized infrastructure practices for our larger development community. They can trust that using these libraries and these constructs, they can find the right object in the right account, using the right IAM role, all while maintaining near zero latency and high standards for delivery to customers. This gives us confidence in our future scalability. We know that we have our S3 storage figured out, and our application engineers can continue to focus on our core business competencies and driving value for our customers. So you may be thinking, you know, this is all very Shutterstock specific. Um, what does this mean for me and my company? Well, I have some tips for you. If you're looking to drive adoption for Amazon S3 and intelligent tiering, 
The first is to be aware of your object size. As I mentioned before, S3 Intelligent Tiering has a minimum object size of 128 kilobytes for management. S3 Storage Lens is a fantastic way to get an account level snapshot of your storage consumption patterns and to get information like the average object size in your bucket, frequently accessed objects, and transitions that are happening between your tiers. Use S3 Storage Lens to know where it's appropriate to use the default sets and the opt-in tiers from Intelligent Tiering. When you're putting things in S3, take your object metadata with you. You want to make sure that you're maintaining information like cacheability, your cache control headers, your content type encoding. When you put something into S3, you want to think about how you're going to leverage that data in the future and how you're going to pull it out. If that object metadata is correct and tightly associated to your S3 store, you know with confidence that features like CloudFront fronting your S3 buckets are going to be easy to implement, and your content will appear for your customers in the correct format. Don't be afraid of the opt-in tiers. We've leveraged the primary S3 intelligent tiering for the majority of our buckets, but there are still asynchronous opt-in tiers, which are very powerful if you have workloads that you know are only going to be executed once or twice a year, and you can plan ahead to retrieve these objects out of deep archive. So where do you start? We found that access logs were a great place for us to start. Access logs streamed either from CloudFront or Elastic Load Balancers in EC2 arriving into S3 are a great place to enable intelligent tiering. We frequently front our access log buckets with Athena, and we're pleased to find that with intelligent tiering enabled, we saw no impact to our Athena latencies, allowing our developers to look at our access patterns as the logs are delivered in real time. If you want to know more about how Shutterstock achieved these fantastic cost savings and some of the other methodologies that we used to save money and to increase our performance for our customers, check out the Shutterstock blog on the AWS Storage blog channel for more information. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I am Jefferson Fraser, and I'll be around on the side to answer any questions that you have briefly after the session. Thank you.